You're finally done with editing, audio, visual effects, and color. Your video looks and sounds great, and you're ready to share it with the world. Only one step left, exporting. This video is all about how to choose the best export settings for your specific video project and how to optimize your video editing system for the most efficient export possible. We'll talk about choosing the right file format, resolution, aspect ratio, and bit depth for your project. Then we'll tell you what you need to optimize your editing system for the most efficient export possible. Let's dive in. Chris here from Videomaker. There are time codes below if you want to know what we're covering or want to jump to any place in this video. Do you want to edit faster? If so, we have a list of the top 10 keyboard shortcuts you need to know. To get it, click on this card or the link in the description. Let's start by talking about why you need to export in the first place. As you edit, you are piecing together a story from a bunch of different video clips. Exporting is the process of compiling all of those video clips and other media into a single playable file. Not only that, but it also renders those clips into a new file format. Cameras are designed to capture high quality footage in order to give you more information to work with as you edit. That means native video files pulled directly from the camera will often take up a lot of space and may use specialized formats that standard video players might not be able to read, making them harder to share. That's why the delivery format is almost always different from the camera's native video format. Through exporting, we can take the native video files used during editing and convert them into a more widely accepted format. However, there's yet to be a universal best file format for video exporting. Some delivery destinations require specific file formats, so content that's meant for multiple destinations will require multiple exports. Now you know why we need to export video. Let's look at some specific settings to consider. When you export a video, you need to choose a file format. In video production, the file format refers to the codec and container used to store video and audio data. A codec defines the way the media data is encoded for storage and decoded for playback. A container is a wrapper that holds the compressed audio and video data along with instructions for reading the file and other data like time codes and subtitles. So how do you know which video format is right for your project? To answer this, we'll need to know how your video will be viewed. Let's take a look at a couple couple different scenarios. Say you edited your video using a raw video format. These are huge files that include a lot of information, making them exceptionally flexible for post-production. However, when you export the video for YouTube or another social media platform, you don't need to preserve all of that information. In that case, you'll be converting your clips from raw files to a smaller, more compressed video format that's easier to share on social media. In this case, you might choose to export to a H.264 codec in an MP4 or MOV container. In another Another scenario, you might need to convert your footage from one compressed format to another. For instance, you may want to export a project built with ProRes 422 video files for theatrical release. In this case, you would export to JPEG 2000, the current standard for digital cinema packages. This format uses the .jp2 file extension. When you export your video, you'll also have the chance to change its resolution. Though many cameras now shoot in 4K, many destinations still only accept 1080 HD video files. Don't worry, you can still edit your project in 4K and then export the finished video at a lower resolution. This is a process called downscaling. You are downscaling anytime you convert a high resolution video to a lower resolution. While the downscaling process won't preserve all of the detail from the original 4K footage, it does often result in a sharper video compared to video shot in HD. The opposite of downscaling is upscaling. This is the process of converting a video shot at a lower resolution to a higher resolution. Converting an HD video to 4K is the most common example. While technically possible, the results of upscaling are not always ideal. That's because in order to increase the resolution, your editing software needs to create new pixels based on the information provided in the original file. Unfortunately, upscaling HD footage to 4K won't add any new detail to your image. However, upscaling can be greatly enhanced to produce better results using AI augmented upscaling tools and a system that is equipped to accelerate AI like with the NVIDIA RTX GPUs. In the end, upscaling and downscaling are both handy options when you need to export your video in a specific resolution. However, if you know the desired delivery resolution, it's best to shoot in that resolution from the start.
Along with changing the output resolution of your video, you may also want to change its aspect ratio. The aspect ratio tells us how wide a video frame is compared to its height. HD video and web content use the 16 by 9 aspect ratio. This works out to be a ratio of 1.77 to 1, meaning the frame is 1.77 times wider than it is tall. Its inverse, 9 by 16, is 1.77 times taller than it is wide, making it a portrait-oriented aspect ratio. This type of shooting is sometimes called vertical video and is used primarily for social video. Slightly larger than 16 by 9 is the 17 by 9 aspect ratio. 17 by 9 footage is 1.88 times wider than it is tall. You'll use the 17 by 9 aspect ratio when shooting in DCI 4K, which has a resolution of 4096 by 2160. UHD 4K has an aspect ratio of 16 by 9 and a resolution of 3840 by 2160, exactly four times that of HD. Viewed side by side, DCI 4K and UHD 4K footage will have the same height, but the DCI 4K footage will be slightly wider with its 17 by 9 aspect ratio. Wider still is the 21 by 9 aspect ratio. This ratio is used often for cinematic work since it accommodates the classic CinemaScope aspect ratio as well as modern anamorphic widescreen formats. It's also also used in ultra widescreen monitors like the Dell UltraSharp 38 curved UHB hub monitor. If you need to change the aspect ratio of your video, you have two options. First, you can leave black bars where the original image doesn't align with the new aspect ratio. If the original aspect ratio is wider than the new one, you'll use letterboxing with bars along the top and bottom. If the new aspect ratio is wider, you'll need to use pillar boxing with bars on either side. This preserves the entire original image, but leaves unused space on the screen. The other option is to pan and scan. This is where you crop in on the original image until it fills the entire frame of the new aspect ratio. This tactic will make use of the entire screen screen area, but it will hide parts of the frame. This could potentially crop out important details. Neither option is perfect, but they are both better than squeezing or stretching your video to fit a new aspect ratio. Another setting you might want to change as you're exporting your video is bit depth. This dictates the number of colors that can be reproduced in your video. The most common bit depths you'll encounter are 8-bit, which can reproduce 16.7 million colors, and 10-bit, which can reproduce over a billion distinct colors. 8-bit is the standard bit depth for standard dynamic range, or SDR. 10-bit is the standard for high dynamic range, or HDR footage. HDR extends the range of light and dark that can be captured in a single frame, so more detail can be seen in both the highlights and the shadows. That's why it requires a higher bit depth. While it's always best to capture footage in the highest bit depth available, your choice in bit depth for exporting will depend on the destination of your video. Check with your video destination to see what is supported. Also note that exporting 8-bit video in a 10-bit format won't add any new color information. It's usually best to export your video at the same bit depth you used for editing and color correction. The last export setting we'll touch on is embedded metadata. Metadata is information about other data. In this case, it's the information about the video file itself. For instance, you could store copyright data directly within the exported video file. As we just learned, your audio editing computer needs to process a lot of video and audio data in order to export your project successfully. This requires a powerful machine with high performance components. Most important for speeding up your exporting process are the CPU and GPU. The CPU or central processing unit executes instructions from your computer programs and processes data. The GPU or graphics processing unit is responsible for processing data related to visual output. For faster exports, choose a fast multi-core CPU and a high-end GPU that supports hardware accelerated encoding and decoding. This will significantly speed up your workflow, especially if you need to export multiple iterations of your project. For example, the Dell 7770, a mobile workstation, features up to an Intel i9 and NVIDIA RTX A5500. The top-end CPU offers 16 cores and a clock rate of 5 GHz. Exporting also benefits from GPU acceleration. For a desktop option, the Dell 3660 offers up to an NVIDIA RTX A6000 GPU along with 12th gen Intel Core processor with up to 12 cores and clock rates up to 4.9 gigahertz.
In this video, we discussed why you might need to export the same video in different file formats, which file format is best for you and which computer components do the most heavy lifting when it comes to video export. With that, you should feel more confident the next time you need to edit a video project. Remember, if you'd like to get our list of the top 10 keyboard shortcuts you need to know, click on this card or the link in the description. If you've made it this far, consider subscribing and liking this video. Thanks for watching.